Hello all, Aceto Schools of Chicago. This is Matthew Rodriguez, Chief Education Officer, here with a number of our leaders across the network just to share with you an innovative and creative idea uh, and a creative set of materials that we've put together. We're excited to launch, even though we all know that we are living in some very difficult and challenging times. In these difficult times, it's when we can come together and demonstrate that we are truly made of steel because Somos Acero. We've already seen que Somos Acero when we're supporting our families. We've been strong in that, providing meals throughout the course of this past week. We've seen teachers reaching out and sharing information, sharing love, connecting with students and families. Somos Acero because we've been able to support each other. I know that Communities have come together, reaching out, making sure that we're all okay, making sure that we're all healthy and well. And Somos Acero, because we are coming together to make sure that Acero learns everywhere, even amidst this crisis. It is that academic approach, a unified academic approach that we hope to share with you in this webinar. And uh, we look forward to hearing feedback and thoughts about what we've put together with a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and time. Why are we going about putting together a unified approach? For us, this is an opportunity to really centralize all the educational content that we're putting out and sharing with our families. It also allows for us to streamline all the communication so that way families are not receiving any mixed messages. We also recognize as an organization that right now we are struggling with time, uh, with health constraints. And we also recognize that some colleagues uh, are taking care of their children at home. Some of our staff uh, are caring for loved ones or ill family members. And we wanna make sure that in this unified approach, we're able to support one another in reaching our families. This unified approach also accounts for the complexities of the current situation and, and also not really understanding whether or not we're going to have all of our staff fully available to execute this plan. This also narrows the scope of work for all available personnel so that way when we're working together we're working in unison. We're also ensuring that we're combining all of our resources, financial, instructional, and human capital. I want to share a little bit about what makes our approach unified in the next two slides, and then I'm going to turn it over to some of our leaders in just a moment. So in what ways is this approach unified? Number one, we offer website and hard copy materials. Hashtag Aceto Learns Everywhere includes a single network-wide curated web-based and hard copy materials initiative that provides learning materials to scholars and families. We have learning activities for every grade level, K through 12. It's our leaders who have in this last week curated all this content and it serves as the foundational learning materials for our scholars, both, both for this upcoming week as well as the weeks to come, depending on how long we're gonna be in this remote learning experience. We are making sure that all of our materials are providing for the appropriate accommodations and modifications so that even while apart, we are making sure that we are meeting the unique needs of our scholars. All of our materials are modified when and where necessary to ensure that we're accommodating for these needs. We also are providing equal access. We seek to provide equitable access to learning activities and our professional staff. This plan allows for the inevitable staff unavailability given the reach of this pandemic. In addition, our leadership teams have worked and identified the appropriate educational technology programs and platforms, and we're taking full advantage of all those that are available to our students. This allows for us to take deliberate steps to enable, enable scholars and families to access these programs. Of course, one exception is our summit platform, which you'll hear about a little bit more 
and at one of our high schools. This unified approach is also something that allows for a congruence of experience. Acero has many families that have students in more than one school. As a result, it is, our, it is important for us to offer a congruent experience regardless of school specific affiliation to decrease the likelihood of confusion and frustration for families. We are providing paper-based materials. This will be centrally printed and we will be distributing them during the food service pickups. Logistically, a decentralized approach would not allow for that kind of focus and uni unity of our approach. We're also allowing for streamlined student support. Aceto is better able to leverage its entire faculty and staff to offer streamlined student supports regardless of school affiliation. One quick note that I'll share with you, you may hear that I'm stumbling a little bit with my words or with my presentation. Uh, you may even hear some kids in the background who run in. I don't know. That's a part of our new normal. I want to share a disclaimer with you. Myself and the leadership team have made a disclaimer that, that uh, made a commitment that we are going to do this in one take, knowing that we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes but we're going about this together in support of our families. We're trying to get this communication out to you together in support of you so that way we are all moving forward together with Aceto Learns everywhere. I'm gonna turn this over now to one of our leaders at Marquez, Dr. Allison Hansen. Hello everyone, um, I'm Allison Hansen representing the mighty Marquez Marshalls from my kitchen. Um, we have learned so much through our first week of learning from home. Um, a huge thank you to everyone who's offered um, very, very important feedback about how it has been going so far. Um, we hear you that resources can be very overwhelming and difficult to navigate and keep organized. So with that, I am very proud to present to you the hashtag Sarah Learns Everywhere website and shout out to Principal Joanne Tanner from Fuentes for the creative website name. The goal of a Sarah Learns Everywhere website is to streamline our resources and efforts and to have a one-stop shop for students, families, and teachers, making learning from home a little easier for and more accessible to everyone. The uh, Sarah Learns website, um, excuse me, the Sarah Learns Everywhere website has our up-to-date work packets uploaded, a Sarah endorsed EdTech website links and login support, suggested daily schedules, clear guidance on how to be a learner or a teacher at home, emotional and behavioral resources like stress reducing yoga and dance videos, and fun content like virtual field trips. All of these resources are in one place for everyone to go if they need help, ideas, instructional support, and everything has been vetted, translated, accommodations and modifications are in place, and all our review of standards that have already been taught by each grade level. The website is a living resource and it will be updated regularly with new content throughout the school closure. All content will be available in English and Spanish. And most importantly, we're hoping that this website will spark some joy and eliminate some stress for everyone through adorable pictures, fun resources, exciting ideas, games, interactive content, comprehensive guidance, and the facilitation of some much needed connection among families and students and our schools. Next slide, please. So now I will walk you through, this is a screenshot of what the homepage will look like and how to navigate the Acero Learns Everywhere website. The website is fairly streamlined to help with ease in navigating. All you need to do is click on the grade level or your high school on the homepage and it will take you where you need to be. There is also a navigation bar by elementary school, middle school, and high school at the top of the website that will take you where you need to be. In addition to grade level pages, there are pages for fitness activities, social emotional learning activities, virtual field trips, and an IT slash website help page. Other pages may be added as the website evolves. Also at the bottom of the homepage are all of our school email addresses that will be checked regularly so families can reach out if they encounter any difficulties or have any questions. I wanted to give a special shout out to the website help page, which shows you how to use each website, how to log in, and what to do if something isn't working. Next slide, please. 
So once you have selected your grade level, you will find grade level specific content. Each grade level has the same framework, but different academic content for each different developmental level. So families with multiple kids will be able to navigate each grade level similarly, but with just the right level of work. Each grade level page has on it a welcome letter and guide, expectations for learning at home for families, such as how much time to spend doing what each day, a suggested schedule by developmental level, including breaks and ideas for how to fill each day with a variety of activities, tips and tricks for learning at home. We haven't taught our students how to learn at home. This will give students and families some tricks on how to make learning at home easier on both students and families, such as setting up a learning space and ideas for how parents can be, quote, teachers while minimizing conflict. For third to 12th grade, these grade levels have a hub section where daily lesson activities are uploaded using online resources and print materials. These activities are all review of standards that have been taught so far this year. The weekly packet that is distributed at select schools is uploaded in PDF form and will be updated when new packets are available. There's a section of recommended ed tech websites by grade level with links that are linked in to the grade level website. And finally, there's a section for at home project based learning ideas. Finally, each high school has its own website and they look a little different, but each of high school has the same buckets. Next slide, please. The Acero Learns Everywhere website will be linked to the Acero website and app. It'll be uploaded every Friday and on an ongoing basis as soon as I get new content. And parents and families, we will urge you to please check this website for academic content, things to do, fun activities, and ways to stay engaged in learning and all things school related throughout the school closure. Teachers and families and students, please reach out with fun ideas you have for the website. This is our unique Acero tool and we can and should make it what we want and need it to be for our students during this difficult time to keep the joy and keep the learning alive. Now it is my honor to introduce our K-2 team lead. Mrs. Joanne Tanner, Principal of Fuentes and Mrs. Melissa Sweezy, Principal of Santiago. Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Tanner from Carlos Fuentes. Go Eagles! I will be reviewing the expectations for our students in kinder through second grade. As Dr. Hansen mentioned, the most important thing that we want to stress is that this should be a time that our students are engaging academically while also enjoying the comfort of home and being able to find that joy throughout the day. So we suggest that our students are reading every day for about 20 to 30 minutes, practicing writing or drawing for 10 to 15 minutes a day, working on math and project-based learning. Movement and physical activities as well as the arts are very essential during this time as well. And social emotional support and learning. That could look like students talking with other siblings or their family about how they're feeling, writing letters to loved ones, or helping out around the house. Hi everybody, Melissa Sweezy, Principal at Santiago, Go Spartans. For our online learning options for our K2 kiddos, we continue to recommend ExactPath for both ELA and math work. Since our students and teachers are familiar with the program and because it's aligned, of course, as we know, to their most recent NWEA scores. After careful consideration, we did decide to add Lexia, which is a high quality research based program many of our students and teachers have used and valued in the past. And we chose Lexia because it provides explicit systematic instruction specifically focused on foundational literacy skills. This is an area we're most concerned about with our K2 children and want to do our best to ensure that they're not regressing or plateauing in this area. Santiago students and teachers are using it now, so we'll do our best to support you uh, throughout. 
there is a chance that we will add some additional online programming. And if we do, of course, we'll be sure to provide access to all of our students and teachers across the network. For our project-based learning options or capstone project as, as we've referred to it as well, each grade level K to two organize these opportunities just slightly differently, but the primary intent again is just for students to have fun with their families. For example, one week first graders are asked to be party planners and then have a different option each following week, whereas kindergartners have an option to choose if they want to be weather reporters or chefs for the next four weeks. Second graders are engaging in a four week or, or potentially more family project where they work on a variety of activities such as writing their own family song and plan planning, excuse me, a dream family vacation. Now I'll turn it over to our third through fifth grade lead, Ms. Karim Gomez, principal at Octavio Paz. Thank you, Melissa. Hello, everyone. This is Karim Gomez, principal of Paz. Hola a todos. Today I will be guiding you through a remote learning plan for third through fifth grade students. Our students' expectations, next slide, please. Thank you. Our students' expectations are based on the fact that students at this grade levels are capable of understanding more complicated ideas, can learn vocabulary through reading, and can learn and do more complex math. Therefore, we're asking that all of our third through fifth grade students engage with the learning in 30 minute content learning segments. They should engage in reading and writing and math every day, engage in social emotional learning activities at least twice a week, and take movement and brain breaks in between content areas or as needed. The following EdTech programs will support our students through the remote learning experience. Exact Path, Great Minds for Wit and Wisdom and Eureka Math Lessons, Mystery Science, and Reading A to C. Lastly, our project-based learning experience is based on student choice. Students will have a menu of grade level appropriate projects that they can choose from. Now, I will leave you with Ernesto Saldivar, Principal of Closet. Saludas, familias de acero. I'm Ernesto Saldivar Jr., the principal of Torres Elementary, home of the Wildcats. Next slide, please. All sixth or eighth grade students across the network are being provided with weekly instructional learning packets, which you will also find uploaded onto this website in social and emotional learning, English language arts, mathematics, social studies, and science to be completed daily with the intention to strengthen the skills that they have been working so hard to master this academic year. To reinforce their learning, it is important that your child is supported in following the recommended times on e-learning platforms for both reading and math using Edmentum Exact Path and Study Island, in addition to reading independently for 30 minutes a day. Our students are being provided with project-based assignments in social studies and science. These projects help students learn about the world around them and their place in it. Our leadership team is currently developing a capstone project where students will create a portfolio documenting all the learning, all their learning during this time. While students in grades six through eight are more independent, our learning packets provide opportunities for family collaboration, especially around social emotional learning. With this in mind, it is important that parents check in with their children, set goals, and provide the necessary encouragement to keep them motivated. If you or your child should need academic support, feel free to visit us during our office hours. And now I will introduce you to Principal Kelly Smith. Hello everyone, this is Kelly Smith, Principal of Victoria Soto High School, Go Wolfpack. I'm excited to share with you what we've come up with for our ninth through 12th grade students. Next slide. It is the expectation that all of our students are participating in 45 minutes of a day in core content areas, including English, math, science, and social studies. On top of that, we're asking every student to read for 30 minutes independently each day, something of their choice, as well as 30 minutes of physical activity. We have gathered a plethora of online um, resources on the website, and we are encouraging you, if you do have online access, to use this, these platforms so we can provide feedback more quickly. However, if you don't have online access, we do have physical packets. It is different work, but it is still um, an opportunity to strengthen skills while we're not in school. We have three EdTech programs that are um, 
students are familiar with, Google Classroom, Khan Academy, and at Soto High School Summit Learning. So we're gonna continue using those platforms. There are projects for both online and in the physical packets for all students. What makes our portion of the website a little bit different than the other grades is that we are separated by school. Each unique school has a unique curriculum and we wanna make sure to honor what our students have accomplished and make sure we're strengthening those skills. So when you click on the website, you can click on Cruz, Soto, or Garcia. Thank you so much. I'm gonna turn it over to Ariel, our Deputy Chief Education Officer. Thank you so much, Principal Smith. Hello, Acero family. This is Maria Laureano, Deputy Chief Education Officer here at Acero. I do want to start by saying how inspiring it has been to see everybody come together to support our Acero families, scholars, and each other during this very difficult time. We recognize that there are many questions, one of those questions being what the role of teachers, apprentices, office coordinators, and IT staff should be during our remote learning time. Please know that union colleague engagement remains a critical priority for us. We are currently in discussions with the union and look forward to sharing next steps regarding potential union member collaboration and engagement. In the meantime, please be well. We'll get through this together. Now I turn it over to Mr. Adam Sparks, principal at Cisneros. Hi everyone, Adam Sparks here. I'm the principal of the Champion Cheetahs of Sandra Cisneros Elementary School. As you can imagine, the logistics involved with reimagining our network's academic approach are pretty complicated. It's going to take the work of everyone, regardless of your school affiliation, to make this successful. Uh, and it's all in an effort to ensure that our students and families have equitable access to learning while they're away from us. I'm gonna be sharing with you here some of the high level details that are important for you to know and understand so that you have an understanding of how we're gonna go about our remote work. Let's begin with content distribution. There are three specific content curation teams that play an essential role in the creation and delivery of learning experiences for students. The first are the content leadership teams you've just heard from. Each content leadership team consists of various members of our collective school's leadership teams, such as assistant principals, instructional coaches, and members of the central office's Department of Student Achievement. Content leadership teams have a standing deadline of end of day Wednesday to submit their content for the upcoming week. From there, the Department of Student Achievements, English Learners Team, and Diverse Learners Team all have, uh, excuse me, they have all day Thursday to ensure that the content provided has adequate accommodations and modifications for students who need targeted academic supports. This will leave Fridays for the logistics team. Content will have to be combined into single PDF format, and it has to be branded appropriately, and then it gets uploaded to the Acero Learns Everywhere website by Dr. Hansen. Once that work is done, we will send the paper-based materials to a third-party vendor who will print the bulk material and then deliver it to our network's grab-and-go food pickup sites. Paper-based materials are going to be available for our students and families every Wednesday. This is important to note. Uh, we are not delivering paper-based materials to each individual school. This reduces confusion for families, so they don't have to think, okay, I get food from school A, I pick up my child's work at school B, None of that. The grab and go food pickup sites are also the paper based materials pickup sites, and they currently include Cruz, Clemente, Fuentes, Paz, Cisneros, Marquez, Idar, and the Veterans Memorial Campus. We can go to the next slide. Acero Schools is moving forward with the deployment of our Chromebooks to families who were pre identified by each school as those in need of a device. We're doing this in an effort to better ensure equitable access to the content that can be found on our Acero Learns Everywhere website. The pickup locations for these devices will be limited in order to better manage the logistics involved with Chromebook, Chromebook dispersal. Families are going to be contacted by Acero school staff with their pickup day, time, and location. We anticipate dispersing close to 1,000 devices the week of March 30th. Now, it's going to be important that a parent and guardian is present for any student under the age of 18 at the time of device pickup. There will be forms that need an adult's signature. We cannot provide a device to a student under the age of 18 without the signed forms. 
And if an Acero Schools staff member becomes aware of a student or family that needs access to a device, please bring that to the attention of your school principal, who can then work with our logistics team on a way forward. Please wait, though, until those devices have been dispersed before contacting your principal, as we already have a significant number of families on our pre-identified lists. There's a good chance that the family you're thinking of is already on the list. And some may be wondering why we're deploying Chromebooks that families may not have access to the internet. Please know that Comcast is offering free Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city and our country. If you see Xfinity Wi-Fi appear as a Wi-Fi option, you can select it and automatically connect to the internet for free. We hope our students and families take advantage of that pretty incredible resource. Our external affairs team has communicated this resource via our social media channels. Please continue directing families to those channels and encourage them to download the school news application, which was also shared with them so that they can receive push notifications on their cell phone of any other important updates. Next slide. We're glad to share that uh, Acero's Director of Information Technology has unlocked all student accounts so that students can now access Google Hangouts. Google, Hangout, Google Hangouts uh, works very similar to, similarly to programs like Zoom, but uh, it doesn't have the participant cap and the time limits that come with the free version of Zoom. And as Dr. Hansen mentioned, we have created school-specific emails that families and students can use to send their questions. We understand that working virtually is going to be a challenge for students, staff, and families. Uh, and even though we're apart, we are getting uh, information overload. Questions are bound to come up and sometimes we just don't know who to ask, right? So these emails ensure that families and students have a way to ask their questions without worrying about who they're asking. These emails go directly to the school leadership team members who can then direct the question to the appropriate person for a response. Uh, students and families are still welcome to email staff directly though. Uh, next slide. Lastly, here are a few key expectations that we're going to have moving forward. Uh, I'm sharing these bits of information with you just so we're all on the same page. First, Acero Schools is only printing and providing to families the content curated by the content leadership teams. We cannot logistically print teacher or school specific materials. Second, our plan does not rely on access to technology. Though we have a fancy website and several ed tech platforms, students and families will still have access to meaningful learning experiences if they solely rely on the paper based materials. And lastly, the content curation teams are going to adhere to the stated deadlines to ensure that the process we've established works effectively. If we advertise dates for family access, we're going to hold true to what we advertise. It's also important for me to note that the week of April 6th technically remains spring break. So because of that, we're not going to be providing learning materials during, during that week. However, the grab and go food pickup will continue without interruption. Uh, and lastly, the last slide I have to share with you is our contact information. If you have questions or comments you'd like to share with any of the speakers today, uh, specifically the leads on these particular se sections in the middle column under responsibility, uh, their emails are provided here for you. So please feel free to reach out directly to us. I'm gonna pass this back now to Matthew Rodriguez, our Chief Education Officer, who's gonna share more about the impacts of government decisions. Thank you, Principal Sparks. Just to note, the reason that we're doing this webinar and recording is also so that way you can pause, you can rewind, you can go back, you can also see the slides at your own pace. Um, just note that I'm not going to read each of these slides in their entirety, just share some high level uh, pieces for everyone to understand. We, we all saw this weekend, uh, Governor Pritzker ordered the shelter in place uh, across the state. Um, of course, essential businesses are able to remain in operation uh, in critical functions are able to continue to take place. One of those critical functions is schools and providing for distance learning. Um, so you may have been asking yourself the question, how is this print material going to be produced? How are technology and Chromebooks going to be distributed if we're all expected to be shelter in place? There are provisions for schools, especially providing for students that are in the most need to be able to have access to materials and resources during this uh, time of shelter in place. We will be taking all necessary precautions to ensure the six feet uh, per person distance is maintained while we're engaged with these activities. Uh, in short, 
the main point here on this is that we are still going to move forward with distribution of materials and distribution of resources because we believe it's the right thing to do and we have the appropriate provisions via this executive order to ensure that it takes place without interruption. You also know that through the guidance we've received from ISBE, in fact, on March 17th, there was specific guidance related to grading. Just a, a brief note on this, all grades or any activity packet that's completed, any material that's submitted via email or otherwise can only count positively towards student achievement. believe that I'm back. Um, I heard someone say that there's no sound. Again, technical difficulties, but we're still moving forward. Um, I made the disclaimer at the beginning, knowing that that may be the case. This is unfortunately our new normal. Um, I was just referencing some of the guidance being provided by ISBE uh, with, relate, with relation to grades. Um, and so just want to articulate that it's important that any work that's received from students in this period while, we're, while we are having distance learning can only count positively. Uh, we've already put in some parameters for those who are assigning grades or who will be assigning grades. Um, it, it, the, the protocol is outlined here in these six steps. Again, I'm not going to read it. The main point is that those assignments are gonna be created and entered with zero points so that way any additional points again will only count positively towards those students grades in this period we understand that we are not a team because we work together we are a team because we respect trust and care for each other in this difficult period we hope to strengthen our bonds uh, during this distance learning we hope that we can come closer together as we launch this exciting, creative, innovative uh, strategy called Aceto Learns Everywhere. I wanna thank you for taking the time to listen to this webinar and thank all of the leaders who are on this webinar who participated in creating both the content of the slides as well as all of the leaders who participated in creating the content that's gonna be received for our scholars K through 12 from now moving forward. We're excited about this time, even though it's challenging, but we know that we will be able to stand firm and say, somos acero.